What's up, Viking fans? Welcome to Ranking the Purple, a brand new show by the Vikings Entertainment Network where we are going to attempt to rank anything and everything Minnesota Vikings related. Uh, I'm your host, Cy Amundsen, and I am joined in this first ever edition, a playoff edition of Ranking the Purple, by a couple of friends of mine who I knew would be perfect for this project. You know them uh, from all things KFAN. I know them as two of my favorite, I'm going to say Viking opinionists. Is that a word? Can I go with <laughs> opinionists? Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Nordquist, Paul Meat Sauce Lambert. Thank you guys for doing the show. Of course. I'm the wrong guy to ask if that's a word, so Nordo's my kind of go-to guy if a word, if that's, if a word is a word. No, I love this idea, Cy. Si. I'm, I'm not going to sure. I, I can't be sure that what you have said is completely uh, within the bounds of the English language, but it doesn't matter. We're, we're here to talk about our favorite football team, the ups and downs, ins and outs of it, uh, as the playoffs loom ahead, so I'm happy to do it. I love uh, your guys' show on Saturday. We've talked about that, Saturdays with Sauce. But the moment I knew you guys would be perfect for a first episode was after the Buffalo Bill. And let's be real, we could do an episode about the best moments from this season. Uh, of course, uh, but yeah. We're, we're going to do the playoffs, but we could do a whole show about just the moments in this season. But one of those moments, the Buffalo win, I heard you guys debating Justin Jefferson's catch and where it ranked all time. And uh, I knew you would fit in perfectly because to me, none of us are analytical wonks. We are all just passionate psychopaths who are willing to tell you about the things that were most and least important to us. No, I'd agree with that. And and beyond that argument, the argument was whether that win was the greatest win in Vikings right. history. And that kind of sparked the conversation. Which because, it was. <laughs> well, the, the Bills win. Yes. Now you yeah, the Bills win course. is the best win in Vikings history. So you, you changed course on this, or you didn't change course on it, because I explained uh, just common sense just and logic dictating sure. this entire thing. That the Minneapolis yeah. miracle in the playoffs, no the gravity of it, no the implications of it, all of those things, that made it uh, the, a better and greater victory uh, than a regular season win that just required uh, a bad fumble and a stupid moment by the Bills offense at the goal line. So I, I think the, the, the obvious answer is the Minneapolis miracle. But, you know, you live in the regular season, guys like Cy and I and most of the Vikings fan base, we're, <laughs> we're thinking more about the postseason. Sure, but I just don't know how you – I watched that. I don't know why. It's weird that you bring this up because I watched that game again this week on the NFL Plus app, which is great, where it just goes play to play to play to play. The fact that the Minnesota Vikings didn't – they they got the touchdown, they missed the extra point, and then somehow, some way, the Buffalo Bills – do not run the ball with like four minutes left and the Vikings have one timeout. Everything that the Buffalo Bills needed to do for that thing to happen, happened. The fact that they get that fumble on the one inch line, is it, that that game is one of the best, the catch, all of it. The, the, the miracle is one play. And of course it helps that Sean Payton was skull chanting and the whole thing yeah. fell apart on him. Anytime you could see something weird happen to Sean Payton is great. But it's the Buffalo Bills game, and it's not even close. No one thought the Vikings would win that game. Nobody. This is a good point to start ranking playoff memories, because obviously we're going to have to start with the Minnesota miracle here, but we should point out a couple of caveats. One, th this is a, a story, despite the lack of Super Bowls, this is a storied franchise with a really long history, and if we were to go through every, you know, playoff possibility here, uh, while ranking, we'd be here a while. So I, I made the decision, since we are all in our 30s, and we were all in our formative years when when we were introduced to Randy Moss, that we should break this down into a... This is part one. We are ranking unforgettable playoff memories, part one. Let's say 1990 to current. And uh, if we keep going, we can do a part two, and we'll do the Purple People Eaters and the Drew Pearson and, and all this stuff. Uh, we'll get somebody in their late 70s in here, like Charch, right? We'll get an elderly man to come in and help yeah. me. And uh, so, so that's caveat number one, that we are going to do kind of the memories, uh, the unforgettable memories from our lifetime. I think part two is, 
If we were the New England Patriots, this could just be a celebration of victories, right? But we are, we're not the, we, we all talked about this idea on the phone. We can't just celebrate the good. A big part of who we are is the terrible things we went through as well. So uh, this is unforgettable memories. It doesn't necessarily mean best, right? Well, I think, uh, you know, what's interesting about this concept when you talk about playoff moments is, you know, think about like Michael Phelps for a second. Like nobody's talking about the guy that has uh, 13 silver and or bronze Olympic medals like he is, you know, the, the best of all time. Right. So that's where we are as Vikings fans is all those regular season wins, all those great Buffalo moments, the miracle at the Met and, and that we, we are celebrating a lot of. We got to the podium, but we didn't finish on top. Absolutely. And I, you know, I think with that in mind, you already mentioned it. I, I obviously the Minnesota Miracle is going to live at number one on this list. So, and, and the amount of mini documentaries and clips and it's been covered and covered. Like we replayed the game on the radio like two days later in its entirety to yeah. the point where like almost all of us. That's the beauty of this team. Almost all of us, I think, watched it the following Monday on the NFL Network. Like, yeah. I w even go back to the Bills game when I rewatched it on my couch, knowing the in the the income, the outcome of the game, the fumble at the goal line. I mean, you. That's the beauty of this team is, ever everything about it is just the best. Like, it you just you knew it was happening, but it was still sweet. Like. They could put that game on right now, and I think I would watch it over anything else that's going to be on TV tonight. It's not even close. Yeah, I think the entire Vikings team actually watched a replay of the Minneapolis Miracle on Monday, given what we saw in Philly that following weekend. So, I mean, that's uh, yeah. close. Yeah, you could reliving that. reliving those memories. Uh, there's there's no doubt about how fun it is, uh, which makes this a cool concept. When they, uh, when we won that game, I remember I was living in someone's basement, and that's a big brag. I'm living Humble in times. someone's. I'm living in someone's basement, and they're not even a relative. I rented a basement from someone with my future wife, and I have two people over, and I remember not even, not even being able to properly emotionally react to the moment. I was so in shock because it was so in contrast like we expected the collapse we don't the collapse is what happens to us the the overcoming the collapse in one of the most iconic ways in nfl history that is not what happens to us so i was i almost blacked out uh emotionally but when i came to all i remember is one of my friends joe gill on his knees with his hands in the air like like the end of shawshank where they have that shot yeah. where the rain and he was just like holding a long note but he was screaming the f word so we all agree miracle at one right and we can move yeah, on course. and i yeah, can yeah. throw and some it, other ones at it has you. to be that yeah okay so let's do this let me start throwing moments at you memories things that i put on my list we'll talk them through and then at the end we'll come up with our definitive let's go with a one through five when this is all said and done okay perfect so i'm gonna I'm going to throw out first the Randy Moss, Moon, and Lambo. 8-8 eight and eight team, backs into the playoffs. Uh, we are severely the underdog. You got the Afros. You got the whole bit. Moss torches the Packers, does the Moon. Joe Buck loses his mind. Uh, that one, pretty meaningful for me. Yeah, I think that one was incredible because, like you said, they were 8-8. Eight and eight. Everyone thought it was a Brett Favre-led Packer team. Everybody thought they would get rolled over by that team. I think Randy was dealing with, like, a hamstring injury, and he torched them. They had Kelly Campbell on that team. That That's an incredible moment because it's a playoff game against the bitter rival of this team. But it was also, like, in when Lambeau – Lambeau is still great. Going to Lambeau is fun. But Lambeau doesn't have that mystique it used to have, and – there's a uh, pre Randy Moss Lambo and then post Randy Moss Lambo. Once he went there in '98 and destroyed him, and every time he ever went there, he basically destroyed them. But that game, I mean, he burned Al Harris multiple times on the corner. It was just that was a that was an incredible moment because everybody thought they'd lose 35 nothing. 
if you think about it from 41 Donut in 2000 to where we got in 2004, uh, you have the loss of Corey Stringer in 2001. The team's not very good at times. And 2004, by the way, uh, was a near MVP season for Dante Culpepper, save for the year that Peyton Manning had. And so, but but then the team struggled all year to the point where it was, we need W's just to get into this mix. And then it was, you know, the, the moon's amazing. And that's the, you know, the despicable moment or however the heck uh, Joe Buck put it. But think about Mo Williams right out of the gates early on in that game. Uh, oh, yeah. He's loose out of the backfield and goes for a 68-yard touchdown. Yeah. And I think the Vikings were up like 17 or 20 to nothing uh, before the Packers even had a pulse. So we just punched them right in the sternum, right minute one, and, and didn't look back. No, I, that's in my top five when we put it all together. Uh, that game and that moment uh, is going to be part of it. I mean, that game kicked ass. I also think, and I don't know the number off the top of my head, but hadn't they won like 30-something straight regular season home games at Lambeau crazy. before Randy went there in 98? At one point. Like, Randy ruined the Packers. I was at, so I was at this game. I was at the, the Moon game, and I, I told this story on other shows before, but we – Waited too long to get tickets, and then some tickets came. They were like the only tickets available left. So we were sixth row in zone of the in zone that Randy Moss mooned. And uh, I'd never, I didn't go to a lot of games growing up. So just to go was incredible. But to be there for the, the flyover and when they introduce Brett Favre and Lambo, like you, yeah. you, it's, it's just this. And then all of a sudden, just punch him in the face punch him in the face. I, I, I said this on the tailgate earlier this year. When, if, you'd have, if you'd have panned up from Randy Moss's moon into the audience, there was a 20-year-old Cy Amundsen doing the running man in the stands six rows up. So I, I am... Uh, this one's going to be a hard one to top for me. And I think the other thing is we are all in... We're all like young men at that point. And I think... Sports has evolved so much with social media and the like the things that were so buttoned up years ago aren't as buttoned up anymore. So I think for all of us when he did that moon, uh it was like we I th I thought it was hilarious. I th I mean I think that was an interesting moment when you think about culturally where the NFL was back then and where it is now, right? That game also led most of our generation to hate Joe Buck. We yeah. hated him. Everybody couldn't stand him because we that's our guy. How dare you rip him? And then, of course, Randy, I think, in the media after the game, probably told Sid, like, listen, they do that every time the bus pulls up yes. to the game. They moon us. So, like, it was that. And, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I get kids are watching, but it, it was pretty harmless for the most part. Like, he, if he'd actually done it, then would it be a completely different thing? then the FCC would probably have a whole different set of rules. But, like, yeah. it got a whole generation to despise Joe Buck. Like, all Minnesota Vikings fans, even if – why don't you like Joe Buck? I just don't like him. The mirror – or the, the mooning bit. I can't stand him. Well, that's an awful reason. Well, yeah, but you don't get it. Like, it, it yeah. just – I think a lot of Vikings fans after that, a lot of people despised him because of that moment. I, yeah, I think Joe Buck is the ultimate pros pro in terms so of TV good. boxes. So good. And, I think he's uh, incredible, you know, yeah. And for there a guy were six that was, years where I couldn't stand him. Yeah. yeah, but he always had to live up to his dad's memory as well yeah. in his dad's career. And he's and he's even talked about it too where, you know, a ton of Vikings fans hate me because of this. He knows about it, and he, I think he yeah. handles it the best by just laughing about it because he couldn't care less. He's, he's making a fair dollar doing his thing, and – if anything, his profile's only risen since then. But uh, but at the time, yeah, I was annoyed by it, absolutely. Screw him, that's our guy. And that leads you to another unforgettable memory. Uh, this is not an on-the-field memory, but it's technically a playoff memory. Uh, the Randy Moss straight cash homie quote. I mean, the amount of T-shirts that have been made with that quote. Here's my question for you. I think the only thing that tops it is the Prince cold quote. Is that the most iconic Minnesota quote of the last 30 years? Probably. Yeah, I can't think of yeah. anything else that immediately yeah. does it. 
I mean, he was Randy. I mean, he was he was yeah. just his own his own singular entity within the frame of a pro football franchise. And you know, they as television has gone over the course of time, and even as people like us are doing stuff like this, uh, he was. I mean, he was otherworldly. I think in terms of uh, his image within the league, and he always had interesting things to say, no doubt. Well, and when he said the straight cash homie bit, I think that was a moment where like. A lot of people thought, like, well, we're towards the end of this. Like, even people who loved him, because 98, I know I keep referencing that, I was at that game in 98 against Tampa where he caught two touchdowns, and that was like, I liked football. When I was a kid, I played it, obviously, because of my huge size. But, like, in 98, I was like, this is my favorite thing on the planet. This is the greatest moment. I, I think I was 98, I was 16 years old. And then, like, I think even as good as he was, I think we just got tired of him. Now, we've seen other people like Jimmy Butler wear out their welcome in a year. I think Randy, after about four or five years, and I think with the straight cash homie thing happened, I think a lot of people were like, yeah, I don't know. If this guy gets traded, which I think he did a year or two later, uh, who cares? But, like, when he said, I'm rich, I don't write checks, straight <laughs> cash homie, as he's getting into his car, it's freezing cold out. Wasn't at the end of the year, but like it was, there's... It was in between playoff games. It was it was a response. He... Yeah, it was before the field. I believe, I, I you know I'm not I'm not great at being accurate, but I believe it was after, after Lambo before Philly. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. See, I okay. I thought it was two different. Well, yeah. Then he got that was 04. He was traded a, a year after that. Like I just think enough people had gotten tired of his antics. But say what you want. Like if somebody came up to you and was like, "Hey, man, you just got paid twenty five. Got fined twenty five grand. How are you going to pay for that? Straight cash, homie. Like it's just a brilliant comeback. And it's still in the Minnesota lexicon today. And it's eighteen years, eighteen, nineteen plus years later. It's sweet. We almost got, so the Philly game, the next Philly game, we were a little overmatched, but we hung in that game and we almost got an unbelievable memory from that game based on all this because there was all this swirling negativity around that and his comment and all this stuff. And uh, they were setting up for a field goal and they'd worked on, I believe, a fake field goal. And essentially what was supposed to happen is Randy Moss was supposed to look like angry and frustrated and moping off the field on the field goal, but they were to have only set up with 10 people. So it was this trick. And then he was going to set up on the outside as the wide receiver and go. But then there was a miscommunication and it fell apart. But he and Tice almost used all that energy as, uh, as, a, as a trick play. And I always, I'll always remember that. We, we got to go. We're already there. So we got to stick in 98 because there's a couple for me around... 98 before after yada 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 uh let's just get the one that's terrible out of the way let's get the missed kick uh let's let's get the loss to the falcons it is an unforget i mean it is the thing that like like you said it it formed who we are as football it's, people. it's 25 years ago and it still makes me mad like <laughs> yeah. I, I if i i almost walked out like it still makes me mad it's the i mean we, as I said, it was 98, it was the year of Randy Moss. Everybody thought, like, this is what football is. We dominated Dallas on Thanksgiving. They destroyed yeah. the Cardinals in the playoff game. And it's like, well, of course they're going to – they were double-digit favorites, and they rolled over. The missed kick by Gary Anderson, and as Mike Morris, who used to be on the power trip with us, has said multiple times, Gary Anderson didn't miss a kick all year, and that includes – practice and here we are yeah i i mean if we're not doing best memories and it's unforgettable memories that uh that might be to only to the minneapolis miracle that was that was sadness i remember going back with time and trying to think like why did why did denny kneel on it with 30 seconds left to, to, you know when we had a chance potentially even to get to work in another long potential field goal there taking it to ot and at the time we're all kind of in shock that he misses the kick and as we look back on it obviously that's the a topic but if you think as i think about it when i was a kid i was annoyed that he missed it but we still had the touchdown lead yeah. and so kind of the frustrating factor that you you end up conceding i mean it was knife through butter on that final scoring drive that they had 
uh, to tie that thing up. And, and I was I was in Sioux Falls at a, at a friend's house. Uh, I think I had just turned 14. Uh, there may have been tears involved. It was very embarrassing. Uh, but that felt like the year. I mean, you, you know, you mentioned that Cardinals game, and I'm pretty sure it was the Leroy Horde game. He had like three touchdowns in that game, just like the type of season. And and guys like Leroy Horde and, you know, the three deep poster that I got from Burger King. Uh, I had the three deep poster. Yes. Everybody did. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, you and Norto and I were at Burger King a lot, so they thought we lived yeah. there. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I was at Burger King so often uh, that several of my friends got 3D posters uh, just because <laughs> of my regular uh, patronage of BK getting the, the original chicken sandwich with cheese and just a hint of extra mayo. But beside that, uh, no, that was that was uh, for me. You know, you say formative years, and I think that's the key to it. Is whether it was the old training camps down in Mankato, just growing up, going there really since I was about six or seven years old, seeing these mythical gods uh, right in front of me up at Blakesley and down in Mankato, and and then just r- this rookie who captivated everything stopped when you saw number eighteen, yes. eventually number eighty four, uh, taking the field from Mankato and then eventually into games, and uh, just um, I was in love. Like it's just weird to say it as just a as a young sports fan and I was in love and I was obsessed and whether it was the loss to Tampa during the regular season and then in the end uh, watching the clock tick out on us and Gordon Anderson sends them on to the Super Bowl uh, that was that was painful and I don't even know like it, it felt like destiny the way things played out for John Elway and the Broncos those two seasons they went but I just feel with the way that the the Falcons looked that we would have had a better shot in that game and it's just it's frustrating again saying that was our year i look at 98 and i look at 2009 as as the two years in which i can say that that we truly fumbled our way out of uh, out of the winner's circle because i truly the, believe we make either of those games uh we're beating the broncos in 98 and uh we're yeah. definitely beating those colts uh, in absolutely 09. the the uh, one of my really good friends is a broncos fan lifelong and he he maintains that we would have thumped them, and he's and he's not a guy who rolls over on his team. He's a very defensive of his team guy. Uh, the the other thing that's really tough about that one before we move on is, I think because of the age we were, you were at that point where you're like, oh, this is football. Oh, you just we'll see you next year when we again Correct. score the most points in NFL history, and you know, and then. The thing that makes that tougher and tougher and tougher is every year that goes by, you're more saddled with the reality of how rare that opportunity was. And that's what, that one is the one that burned then. And some are like, I, I, the, the 09 interception by far, which we'll get to in here as well, that one was hard. But this one, it just, it's just a different burn as the years go by. Well, as our good friend, and mutual friend John Creasel says he doesn't have PTSD from the war. He has PTSD because of the Vikings. And it's such a great quote. One, it's because it just shows it's just a sport. Like, it just – it's entertainment. It's funny. But he's right. Like, the 09 bit, not to jump topics, but, like – No, it's fine. I looked at a buddy of mine and was like, we're going to the Super Bowl. They have yes. – Brett Favre is going to lead us down the field. We just have to kick – have a Ryan Longwell field goal – we're going to win. All we need is a field goal. We're going to win the Super Bowl. Dude, when he... Or go to the Super Bowl, sorry. When he completed that first pass to Sidney Rice, I, for the first time, in my head, yes. I thought, it's the first time I let it... We are going. And then, when they panned over to Ryan... like and you, I said that, but I'm still like, eh. And then when they panned over to Ryan Longwell, and he was just... Just the look, he just had this like, don't worry about it. I'm good at yeah. kicking field goals. I'm right. going to thump this. Thing. Like, you're right. It, you bought in. That was the killer, was the, the moment that you, especially with how that game transpired, where it just, it felt so out of control. And then all of a sudden, here you go. Here it is. I, I, I can't add anything to it because now I'm, now I'm getting annoyed. And <laughs> yeah, same, again, say it. <laughs> From an unforgettable moment standpoint, you know, it's these are like snowflakes now where <laughs> the fatalism is is coming into my heart as a Vikings fan. And you mentioned it as these years stack on years, 
and you appreciate how rare these opportunities are. Uh, we'll get to, you know, again, 2017 with the miracle into the Philly uh, disaster and then 98 and, and 09. When when they had that 12 men on the field penalty, I mean, I, I just I, I fell over. It feels like in, in mentally and potentially physically <laughs> had 20 people in my house down in Prior Lake at the time. And when you get that when they get that ball, it's over. Like that, there was nothing, and and even to the point where I'm sitting there like this, I'm I'm somewhat in shock in real time as Favre starts to far side of the field scramble up, and it's just like, well, what on earth are you doing here? <laughs> okay, just get out of bounds, just get out of bounds, and then it's the it's the cock and fire situation, and is and and as soon as that happened. I'm just I'm looking to the left side of the TV screen to find the New Orleans Saints player that's going to pick that thing off. Uh, it just it just moments like that cut me to the core about how close it was. And, you know, in some ways, even more so as shock wears off and time goes on, you just look back and you got the chance to watch that Super Bowl. And you saw how dead those Colts were. And you knew that that matchup was beautiful for us. And you knew that Adrian was going to run all over them. And the way that they manhandled those Colts and, you know, brilliant move, onside kick out of halftime and all that. And Hank Basket uh, screwed that up. And he's, well, he's messed up a few other things after that, too. But that's a different conversation altogether. Right. But just the way, just how much that cuts, uh, it makes that certainly uh, one of the unforgettable moments. I mean, we're basically, what are we, three or four into this thing now? I mean, do we even yeah. need to rank them? We're almost done. Yeah, we we yeah. it's it, we we we're hitting the the ones that feel the best and hurt the most early and often. It that What about Joe Webb in 2012, huh? Yeah. Ugh. I wish can we can we technically qualify Adrian's performance in week 17 against the Packers in a must-win game? Could that technic like if we could include that as a technical playoff game, that that'd be sweet. a fun one. Yeah. That yeah, was that was one. a win and in. I, I would say that the four games leading up to that where you needed to win all four, yeah. and Adrian in the midst of that, that MVP campaign, yeah. uh, He and he would be, uh, again, now 2012, the last time a non-QB uh, got yep. the NFL MVP award, uh, comes so close to Dickerson's record, you find out that like half of Christian Ponder's body is some shade of purple like his jersey. Yeah. And then Joe Webb's bounce passing it to Jenkins uh, inside the twenty, and it's like this game's over. No, we yeah, don't. We over. don't got a shot. And and it, th there have been more games like that, unfortunately, than games that come down to the wire. But and and that's why maybe there's so much hope in this type of conversation in 2022 is different because we've been we've been down to the wire in so many of these games, and it's ended up going the right way, uh, which kind of. Again, as we talk about 98, 09 and some of these spots, like it's almost making us uncomfortable right now. We don't know how to handle being clutch. It's very weird. I remember when AP in that in that week 17 going into that game, I remember them having so little time left on the clock and being at midfield. And in the modern NFL, I think the percentage that a coach throws the ball in that situation was, I don't know, 170 percent of the time. And they handed it off to the guy that everybody, and he runs it 40 yards down. And do you remember the, the press comp or the, the on-field interview and uh, afterwards with him? And they're like, you're like, you came up eight yards short. He's like, eight what? He couldn't even believe that he did all that and couldn't get the record. It was, that was <laughs> not playoffs, but that was a, a truly great moment. I've got a, I've got a positive one for you. And I want to see if it even clicks in your brain because... As I was putting this show together, I had this memory from childhood that I'd thought about a lot over the years, but was just too dumb to research. And I kind of convinced myself, no, if that would have happened, we would talk about it all the time. Clearly, it was a regular season game. Do you remember the 1997 miracle win against the Giants in the playoffs? Absolutely. Kind of. Kind so, of. Brad, Brad Johnson, I believe, is the QB that year, and Randall Cunningham is on the roster. And he comes in for a couple games, but he's starting a playoff game against the Giants, I believe, in New York. And yeah, it was it, in the Meadowlands, yeah. Yeah, it's ugly. Like four, He fumbles it like four times, and in the third quarter, we're down 19-3. to three. And uh, the only way we get back into it is the, the Giants fumble, 
and they fumble and we recover it so close to the goal line that all we have to do is give it to Leroy Horde and he gets in. But even still, it's 22-13 with four and a half minutes to play. Third and four, Vikings run the ball, don't get it, and in a move that would dramatically offend all modern today football minds, we punt it. Down nine with four and a half to play, but they get a three and out, and then here comes Randall Cunningham, down the field hits Jake Reed on, what was it, Norda, like a 40-yard touchdown? It was a it was a thirty yard score if I remember right. Yeah, wow. and then I don't remember on onside on kick, onside yeah, kick. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, Chris yeah. Walsh gets it, and then it was like it's kind of like the Sidney Rice thing. There's one of those similar moments. They get the onside kick, but then Cunningham hits Carter, and all of a sudden we're in field goal range, and they march it all the way down for a really close field goal, and they went a crazy. We never talk about that game. It was incredible. Yeah, the, the final drive is actually, it's a little reminiscent of the final drive in 2015 against the Seahawks at the college stadium. The only difference yes. is, is that Eddie yes. Murray made the kick. Uh, you oh, had the Eddie PI Murray, flag man. that I think Jake Reed uh, got somebody and there yep. was a pass interference penalty. It was yep. Robert Smith with this 16 yard dagger run with like 40 seconds left. Yes. And Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Murray obviously uh, kicks him through to the next round. No, but that, that again, this is, and, and that's the, where the weird lines, and, and Vikings fans can remember this. Uh, as I joked about the 90s games, first round exits uh, in the playoffs under Denny Green. Um, my, my point was, though, is, is the, we were three and three in home playoff games in the 90s. The Dome was not always the, uh, the massive home right. field advantage that, that really U.S. Bank Stadium has been, and, and the Dome was post Randy Moss. I mean, that's almost like a line that you can put in this franchise's history is pre-Randy and post-Randy yeah. because, you know, from a sellout's perspective, merchandise, eyeballs on it, general interest, love, and obsession, and fandom with this team blew up in 98. But you had one of the great playoff moments in Vikings history take place just a year prior where there we had no business losing that game, and that was always the struggle with these teams in the 90s is all that talent, but there were just little – little missing pieces here and there that led to this team's demise uh, you know, in many ways, many seasons. But for them to overcome that was absolutely incredible. Now, again, as has taken place in Vikings history, you have the highs, and then you get your butts kicked the next week, which the Vikings uh, did uh, San quite Francisco, thoroughly. right? I believe yeah, it was I the Niners, was yeah. Friend. Yeah, yeah. And so, and, and so but, the, but a moment like that, it, I don't remember it as vividly as I do the the loss to the Falcons in 98, certainly. But I do remember just losing my mind in that game. What am I watching? How the hell is this happening? And it did. And so that, yeah, that was, that was an amazing moment. No doubt. Playoff football is the absolute best. I was just thinking it, about, you know, you have on your list, the Kyle Rudolph catch was incredible. Yeah. Nardo and I went nuts for that. Like, I think we, I think maybe that was the last time we hugged, like that's how into it we got for that. And, of course, we know how that ended. But, like, as you and I were talking, side, I'm not trying to change the subject, but, like, that Are Kyle Rudolph catch, the world changed, like, 30 days later. Like, you forget that that was in the year 2020. Yes. Because a year later, every – a year, month, 45 days later, everything changed. Like, that was such a cool moment, like – the Saints rivalry, of course, with the 2017 bit. Three years later, we play and we go down there. Nobody ex expects us to win. And you say what you want about the Vox. And PA is going, no, we're going to win. And you're like, yeah. well, yeah, but you have to say that. And he's like, no, 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 no. They are going to win. And, of course, yeah. the throw from Kirk Cousins, which I think a lot of people have been on Thank the fence you. with him. Thank that you. throw to Adam Thielen. That was the memory. Maybe the one of the best, like, non- touchdown throws in Vikings history it was yes. you couldn't hand it to him in a better uh, in a better situation it was incredible that game in itself was I mean Norder and I went ballistic after that Kyle Rudolph touchdown yeah, we did. push off or not who cares we earned that yeah I'm glad you brought that up because that that throw to Adam Thielen by the way uh covering him getting smoked by Adam Thielen was Patrick Robinson 
who a few years earlier was the cornerback that had a, I think, a 50-yard pick six in that Philly game off of Case Keenum. And so the six one. degrees of Vikings football, uh, we finally got one back on Patrick, I guess, although – you know, one was for maybe slightly higher stakes, but that moment was cool. And and Zimmer now, you know, you think about the Zimmer area and the defenses and working with what he had, uh, him rushing Daniil Hunter and Everson yeah. Griffin up the middle from, from the, the D tackle spots uh, was a complete game changer as well. Forced that fumble in the fourth quarter. And that, uh, I think Jalen Holmes, former Viking, recovered that. Yes. Uh, so, yeah. so that game was amazing. But then – Good times, bad times. We go to San Francisco, and I think we got a touchdown early in that one. And then suddenly, like Marcus Sherrill's never fumbles, he muffs that punt, yeah. uh, and and it just it, it went downhill from there. And Jimmy G had a chance to go to the Super Bowl, and all he had to do was hit Emmanuel Sanders wide open on a deep post, couldn't hit him, and uh, and Mahomes hosted hoisted yeah. his first Super Bowl win. But yeah, from the from the highs of being in the Bayou to the battering in the Bay. Uh, just another postseason in Minnesota Vikings history. You could almost rank memories just from that game with everything you guys listed. The Cousins throw, the Rudolph catch, the Zimmer strategy, all that stuff. A, a, a friend of mine, a diehard Saints fan, one of the things I love about that win, and this is so petty, it's so gross and so petty, but that he believes the Minnesota miracle doesn't bother him. Because the Minnesota Miracle, he didn't believe that they were, that was a very good Saints team. He didn't believe they were going the distance. There are a lot of Saints fans who believe that team that lost to us in that opening round was one of the better teams they had in Drew Brees' run. And I take such a petty satisfaction in winning that <laughs> game Saint. that way Saint. because of that. That's that, yeah. that one will maybe gross its way up the list when we start ranking all these at the very end for me. Well, how about that, too? I mean, you think about the Saints and, you know, Drew Brees, by all accounts, uh, one of the great QBs in NFL history, there's no doubt. So a lot of my hatred goes to uh, the Jonathan Vilmas of the world, the Greg Williams, sure. the Sean Paytons. Just thinking back to Bounty Gate in 09 and my general frustration with how that game took place. But think about this. 2017, we smack them with the miracle. 2018, they get back into the NFC title game. And it's the Nickel oh, Roman Coleman, I think, was it Tommy oh. Lee Lewis? The obvious P.I. call, they take that L. They go to OT, Rams win. They go to the Super Bowl, lose to the Patriots. Yeah. But then that, 2019, 2019, as they're winding out the clock on Drew Brees' career, they feel that – and this, this, was the, this was the team right there. And they had a fantastic – their defense has been pretty good the last couple of years, and their longtime D coordinator, Dennis Allen, is now their coach. Uh, post Peyton, but that defense was so good so with Cam Jordan and, and I mean just uh, an, uh, an older and smarter Marshawn Lattimore and and of course I don't remember if it was eighteen or nineteen but Michael Thomas set that receiving yards uh, and or reception record I mean so that that team had it all and uh, we smacked him in the face again don't give us those fish lips and that fake skull chant Peyton because you're gonna can, lose can we stick yeah. with the Saints. Because there's another sneaky great moment that is buried under devastation. You know, there's the 41 donut, Randy Moss squirts the water bottle. The week before is yeah. a Saints game. And that game, that was another game I was lucky to be at. The energy in that building, that was such a slaughtering. And there's three moments that I'll Randy throw at you two guys. Randy in that game, too. A 53 oh, yeah. and a 68 yeah. yards, and they were those. They were the throw the screen. He catches it, and hey, I'm the fastest man you've ever seen. Incredible. They were like beautiful touchdowns. And then you have Robert Tate. Do you guys remember Robert Tate? Oh, of course. Yeah, played S both ways. Yeah, six round out of Cincinnati, wide receiver. He's wears number 83. His first two years in the league, we make him a cornerback. The Saints talked serious trash about that. Robert Tate, I believe. I mean, it was a blowout, but he iced the end of that game with an interception, which is a great moment. But you remember John Randall, right? Yeah, the sack, course, yeah. the crawl around on all fours, yeah. the lifting the leg. Oh, my gosh. That is – lifting. can I make lifting the leg on a quarterback the top memory for me? That is, yeah, that is the funniest sweet. thing. John Randall is the absolute man. And I love that he's still – like. 
in such a funny way on Packer Week, like his social media, he is the funniest, most aggressive. I, I love everything about him. That moment was He's incredible. our Peyton Manning, if you think about it. I mean, yeah. he's our Peyton Manning. He's got a great personality. He's super nice. He, I mean, not that Peyton Manning still lives in Indy, but like he still lives here. John Randall could right. live anywhere in the world, and he still lives here, and he's as diehard yeah. about it as the three of us are. And he's just – he's yeah. such a great pillar for this team and the franchise and what he does with the Legends group and all that. But any – I mean, John – I could do a whole bit on – I mean, John Randall's bit when he – I mean, you go back to like – this has anything to do with the Vikings, but remember he was on the Seahawks and Matt Hasselbeck in the playoffs said, we're taking the ball and we're going to score, and then he throws an yeah. interception. Like, people forget yeah. – that was, I think, Randall's – was that Randall's first year on the Seahawks? But, they, I mean, that's a complete disaster in Seahawks. I mean, think of the bits the Seahawks fans could do. They were going to win two Super Bowls, but they threw the ball at the one. But I digress. Oh. Yeah. No, and, you know, what's in last thing from 2000, and 41 Donut, I think, actually, if we should do most forgettable playoff memories, that would be one of them. Yeah. But yeah, my last thing uh, with, the, with the Saints, um, if you ever wondered, were they getting – the Vikings plays in their headsets. Did the Giants cheat with Kerry Collins and company? Sean Payton, a member of the Giants staff. I just want you to think about that. Oh, really? Uh, I didn't know, know that. that. Uh, I'm, just, I didn't I'm, know throwing, that. I'm throwing it out there. I'm not accusing him of anything. But whether it was <laughs> Bounty Gate in 09 and the fact that he was on the Giants staff in 2000, oh, I, didn't I know personally that. am sensing a trend, and uh, that's why I don't care much for that man. No, no, you either, would be a he's hit gonna be bad. on YouTube. You would be, you just, you need your own channel and just to heave out some perfectly anecdotal evidence and let the people decide. I love it. Yeah. You should do Vikings um, conspiracy theories. Yeah, brought absolutely. To you, brought to you by Reynolds Rap. Yeah, get our, get Randy. You and Randy could do it. You share Vikings <laughs> conspiracies and let our friend Randy share actual conspiracies and see which are more loony. Yeah, I'll do Vikings bits. He'll do secret moon bases and mermaids. It'll be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's there's one other really cool moment. It's not an on the field moment, and it's a cool moment in the one horrible moment we haven't really spoken about, speaking of the, the Seahawks. In that oh. playoff game at TCF. TCF, right? That was the yeah. name of the, that's yeah. the name TCF of the TCF Bank. Yeah. Now, now on TCF Bank. Bank. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh. So at that time it's TCF. Mm. Bud Grant in the coldest weather you can imagine walking out in short sleeves for the coin toss is such a, we're all so I think insecure about our state and so defensive about our state and so die hard about our state when somebody provides a rallying point like we talked about the prince quote when prince said that about you know it keeps the bad guys out we're like you're damn right it does like we're yeah we're so so that man walking out there i promise there wasn't a goose bumpless arm anywhere in america for a viking fan when he walked out just elderly in short sleeves before that game that was incredible that was yeah. incredible that's maybe a i mean non-game related that may be the top vikings moment of all time yeah. it's that and drafting randy moss which completely changed the the route that the franchise went but yeah the the bud grant moment everybody's talking about how cold it was how it was like ice bowl two what was it like minus 15 to start the game the whole bit, and there out walks a gentleman in nothing but pants and a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, yeah, it was it was crazy, and I and the way that the, the way that I've done this, and from an unforgettable playoff moment, is I kind of just think about the seasons in in totality. And with 2015, you know the the awful situation with Adrian Peterson a year prior, he comes back, leads the league in rushing again. And, you know, love it or hate it, uh, everyone's moved on from the previous regime. But 2015, I think, was really the first year in which you got to see, like, oh, my goodness, uh, Mike Zimmer might be on to something with this defense. And I, I just thought, of course. you know, the reason that he was hired to coach here is there was a toughness, there was a meanness, there was a grit to him. And I think the 2015 season embodied some of those elements of his personality in the culture. Yeah. So. 
coming in here, it's cold as hell outside. You got that that wind popping in from the west side of TCF. I mean, that thing was absolutely bones cold. And PA, where I'm up in the booth with him, he's doing the call. He demanded that the windows stay open. We need to hear that crowd noise. We need to be part of this. I mean, that's just that's the rube element of how we operate. And it makes and, it good I mean, too. That's what makes it. And the, and the con- absolutely, and the conditions were awful. The conditions were terrible. The game itself. I mean, Blair Walsh was an MVP until that other thing happened. Uh, he keeps us in it with those field goals. And you got Captain Munderland that goes for the ball instead of trying to sack uh, Russell Wilson. And I think that led to the only touchdown of the game, uh, whether it was maybe Baldwin or Jermaine Curse, I don't remember. But, I mean, just all of those moments. And then you finally have that drive that I mentioned was like that 97 game where you get the clutch pass uh, to Kyle Rudolph. He gets P.I. on Cam Chancellor. And yep. it's just and, – and Teddy hadn't looked – and God bless him. Teddy didn't was not the guy. It didn't look like that day that was going to drive us back, but he did. And he put one freaking drive together. And it was Adrian for eight or nine yards, puts it on the left hash, and and the rest is obviously history. But that game, the coldness and and just it, the gravity of it into the playoffs, uh, the opportunity potentially that next week. I can't remember whether it was Carolina or Arizona that we would have went to that year. May have been Carolina. I think I think but, it was uh, going to be. Car- they won the Super Bowl, didn't they? Uh, well, they or went didn't to they the play Super Denver, Bowl and they lost to Peyton. Yeah, that was when uh, everybody ripped uh, Cam Newton for not jumping on that fumble. Yeah, he means yeah. yeah. that. He just stood there. Yeah, yeah, correct. And so, but but it all started that day with we're toughness, we're cold, we're mild salsa, we're tater tot hot dish. Uh, we're custom knit sweaters up here, and we don't, you know, so provincial. If you're not one of us, then stay out. But when Bud Grant rolled out there in short sleeves, it's like, I am He Man, hear me roar, and it was it was yeah, incredible. I have Certainly the power. Was. Yeah. The the other thing about that is, you know, Teddy Bridgewater is, you know, where he's at in his career now. But that that was the moment where Teddy had developed this reputation prior to that game of like. You know, he might not quite be there yet where we think he's going to get to as an overall quarterback and a, and a talent, but he has the thing we need, which is money on the line, go get the money. I mean, he'd done it a number. And so to your point, Nordo, I, I think the other thing, had you made that kick, I think the other thing you're dealing with in that moment, you go, wait, do we have a, do we have a stud quarterback? And we, we know the rest is history. And we all remember how well he was throwing the ball around in that preseason and really starting to get down the field. But that, that I was think the it other... was against the Rams or Chargers in 2016. It was the Chargers. Uh, I, it may have been Chargers. Yeah. It was the Chargers and it was yeah. the third preseason game. He yes. hits Kyle Rudolph on just a missile dime over the middle. Again, it's a preseason game for a touchdown. Uh, he hits the showers, and it's like, we are on to something, guys. It was different. Go. We got our guy, yeah. Yeah, he's here and – Tragedy strikes I mean, August thirtieth, maybe. Two I don't days remember. later, two yeah, like it two was days real later, quick. right? It was like yeah, a Tuesday. You guys were all at the fair, yeah. To have we him, freaked out and wasted yeah. a first round pick on Sam Bradford, and they turned the Eagles turned that into Derek Barnett, who gets a strip sack on Cape's Keenum when he was driving <laughs> to the game. Stop. I mean, it's just again, size all right. These you things. should do a podcast, and just you should be the guy who walks into a room farts and then walks out that's what you're doing with all of these awful memories you remember this you remember that yes nordo we all remember that it was horrible it was horrible was the snl character debbie downer yeah that's nordo downer nordo negative negative nordo nordo. negative nordo negative i like it uh, the, uh, the I love this team, but I'm so heartbroken. Same. I'm so I'm so heartbroken too. I've gotta I've gotta end on I've gotta refocus on Bud Grant. That is there is nothing more Minnesotan than the ex Viking. Like you would have to have an ice house that doubled as a hot dish restaurant, or like I don't know a snowmobile that was covered in moose. I don't know what more Minnesota e Minnesota thing can exist than that Bud Grant thing. But uh, that's 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 about as Minnesota as it gets. What, tell me, guys. I've laid them out. There's a couple here. You know, we've got the the Cowboys ass kicking was a fun one. You know, that was great. The Farview. Yeah. That was a that was a fun one. It gets lost in the mix. 
Uh, I was very nervous before that game, and to see it that go was the, the way pants went, on the ground bit right after, right? That's where I was going. Ever you remember pants on the ground and Favre <laughs> doing it in the locker room? The, Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell. Yeah, I told Parsi. Kevin O'Connell's post game. If you got uh, anybody watching, if you haven't, if you haven't been watching his post games, go back and watch all of them. It's like a season of a TV show because of how crazy this year has been. It's a great watch, but they all pale in comparison to pants on. They brought the pants on the ground guy in. You remember that? Yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was a fun game. Who was the who was the cowboy linebacker who was real sad that we ran the score up on him? Oh, um, oh gosh. I can't remember what his uh, name was, but somebody had a real problem with getting thumped in the NFL. Yeah, right playoffs. when we, right when they threw it. Is it Sean to, Lee? Was Todd, I, don't, I don't remember. No, it wasn't. Was. No, it wasn't Sean Lee. Might be too early. But no, hold on. Right when they threw it, let me look it up. But right when they threw the pass to Tahi, he turns to the Vikings bench as the play's going over his head, and is like, "What are you doing? Like you're up. What did we win? Thirty-eight-three. Mm-hmm. The, uh, br- um, it might have been 38, 14, something, but it was a beatdown. Keith Brookie. Keith Brookie, that's absolutely Keith Brookie. right. Keith Brookie, that a that boy. He complained that a boy, saucy. during the game, and then he complained after the game. And even Jerry Jones, because our not Jerry Jones, Jimmy Johnson on the Fox thing, the Cowboys have made him a ton of money, said, <laughs> if you don't like it, stop it. And he said it about the, the Cowboys right after that game. Sorry, go on. Well, no, I was just I was just trying to think because I other than oh wait we uh, we have the Asante Samuel pick six Brian Westbrook gets loose I, I just again more negative than positive as a team that was five and eight in the playoffs the last twenty two seasons uh, sure. I, I think we, I think we've covered it all man I mean we've we've lived all the highs and lows we've gone surfing for sure uh, with this team over the last couple of decades. Absolutely. So here's the big question then. Since we have danced on both sides of the line and it's unforgettable memories, not best memories, and three guys, three votes, it's, it's an easy tiebreaker situation. I think we can all agree one, two are Minnesota Miracle 98 missed kick situation sadness, right? Those are one, two, yeah. but... yeah. I, I have to, because we have a playoff game coming up. Ask me in three months which one I is more unforgettable to me. I, I think if you're being honest. No, I don't know. I was going to say, I think if you're being honest, the, the, the one is more unforgettable. But it's not. I, I take that back. The, the Stefan Diggs thing, I think it tra- I think it it just escapes Minnesota. I mean, it's it's got to be considered. That is like the, the Franco Harris catch. The catch I mean, it's... It's going to be played for a hundred years. The yeah. the the miss kick isn't going to be played for a hundred years, in, you know, out in the NFL world. So for me, one two, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go miracle one. Uh, the miss in '98 two. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I mean, you think about greatest yeah, that plays works for in me, playoff yeah. history. You know, uh, why check to Dyson the Music City miracle? You think about that. That's the kind of conversation you're having. Um, Minneapolis miracle number one, me in Sioux Falls crying at age 14. That's going to be number two. Yeah. So then I agree with all those. Yeah. Do we have to, I think I'll just keep pushing and you guys push back. So you got it. I think the next one, because of what it means in Lambeau against a team that was better than us that that year and all the iconic imagery and like we said quotes that came out of it is is the Moss is the Moss Moon game the beatdown is that number three for us now the other ones that are floating around here that I think could go into that number three spot is you have the 97 Cunningham comeback which I really want to stump for that because I think it's this amazing forgotten moment for me that would go three and Moss would go four uh, but I'm open to being pushed around. Rudolph, the the Rudolph game had so many moments, and I think those are the three that are really vying for this third spot. Are you know Rudolph, the Moss Moon, and the Cunningham comeback? Is there any way I can convince either of you to come to the Cunningham comeback deserves more respect side? No, I'm I'm in on it. I'm in on I love it. it. Yeah, it works for me. Yeah. 
I think the Moss Moon is three simply because anytime you can get a playoff well, memory over the Packers, I think it second. gets higher on the list. Yep, that's fair. So I you can't. Got, no, no, I no, can't. You're, 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 kind, you're the tiebreaker. If I'm going Cunningham, and it's funny, the moment Saw said that, I was like, yeah, you're right. But I'm, I'm going to hold firm here over on Cunningham. So no, Cunningham and that's or Moss. Fine. Well, here's the here's the problem is I'm going I'm going right off and I, I hate to be negative. Um, and this is just the state of being, you know, in love with a franchise that's seen more losses and wins. I, I, Farvo nine. I mean, it's just the the across the body uh, that moment. It has to be in top five because it's just I, I just saying Farvo nine. Uh, if I was asking Jay behind the camera right now what I mean by Farvo nine. Um, it's not going to take him more than a millisecond uh, to know and yeah. kind of tear up a little bit, just like that moment makes me want to tear up a little bit. So for me, it's, you know, it's it's absolutely the 2009 NFC title game because it's one of two that was our year things for me in my lifetime. Ah, that's a really good point. So, so then, Sauce, I'm with you. Here's the thing. I'm with you. I'm gonna cast a. I'm gonna cast a deciding vote here, and I. Ah, this is why I would be a horrible judge. I'd be the worst judge, like those judges who have to decide stuff at the. You know, yeah, what do they call I, I it? Couldn't, when you, I couldn't decide on any of it. When you don't do a jury, you're like just asking people, like you're asking the bailiff. I don't know. Do you trust her? What is right? She seems nice. Like I got, I got nothing. Uh, I. I'll, I'll agree to Farvo 9 at 3, but to me, for it to be a top 5, 4 and 5, there have been enough positive moments here. So if we go Miracle 1, uh, 98 to Farvo 9, 3, the big conversation here is I, I think Moss is 4. So which there one's we getting go. the Moss is the Moss Moon is 4. Which one's getting the boot here? Is it the Forgotten Cunningham moment? Or is it the uh, the Kyle Rudolph game? I, I'll argue this. The Cunningham moment launched. I mean, doing that, he stays around. That might be like a veer off the timeline. If that doesn't happen, who knows how the offseason takes place and then what sort of situation are we yeah. in, Good right? Good point. So I, I want to argue for that, but there's two of you. If either of you want to push hard for the for the Saints game, I'm here to I'm here to hear that. Yeah. Well, the and Saints game. The, Go ahead, Nordo. Well, I, I loved I love the Saints game. I did not love what happened as we got just absolutely slaughtered in San Francisco. I think you know that everyone was talking about how Stefanski was already thinking about going to Cleveland like that day. Uh, just a just a weird situation in San Fran. But that's that's a little bit of recency bias. Um, and again, yeah. I, you know, without going too down too down the line of Vikings lore, how many times in playoff history are you going to get an onside kick into a game-winning field goal? Um, yeah, I good would point. be I'd be prone to lean Eddie Murray. Well, yeah, I'm think with about, that. Yeah. Think about if next week in the playoffs in TCO, if the Vikings are down twenty-two to ten or excuse me, 22 to 13, and the other team has the ball, which would be very on brand with this season for that to happen and us still win. But if that happens in this year, going with your recency bias argument, we are all banana. We're like, this is one of the all time. So I think, I think that's, I think you're right. I think you got to avoid recency bias. And if, if sauce is okay with it, I think Cunningham comeback rounds out the top five. I think you're right. I like all those. Yeah. I mean, the the uh, the Rudolph bit was incredible, but like if if you said if the Rudolph thing, I mean let's just talk it like it you know we can make it up as we go. But if the Rudolph thing happens in '97 and the Cunningham like comeback happens in 2020, we're it then then it, yeah you're right. The recency bias is what makes us not think a lot about the Cunningham comeback, and that's why I think it should be in the top five. Cute little win against the Giants, and then the next year it's fifteen and one. A star is born with Randy Moss and all of that, so it can be easily forgotten. But not here, not here, because we take these lists seriously, and we're not ranking just for the hell of it. Okay, so we appreciate history. We are not in a completely biased by just what the closest moment was. Uh, we go back into the annals of time. We do the proper research. 
So here's where we land. I love it. I think we, I actually think we did. I was a little nervous about playoff memories and us, you know, Nordo negative and all like, I, I was where you were at Nordo. I thought that's where we were going to live, but we have a pretty good list here. Minnesota Miracle 1, uh, 98 Miss Kick 2, Fargo 9-3, the Moss Moon Lambo Destruction Four and the Cunningham the Cunningham comeback really spices things up. It makes it a nice list. So that's our top five. Well, and uh, it keeps guys... Blair Walsh off the list. That's, it, that's exactly yeah, right. It keeps yeah, Blair Walsh off the list. list. Yeah. Blair Walsh yeah. is down right. at seven, which is where that's that's a good spot. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you thank are both you. kings. Uh, everybody listening, consume all the things they do. But I would say, uh, if I could take a moment personally consume Saturdays with sauce guys. I've, I've told you both this. I love that show. It's so great. It's so fun. It's a lot like this. It's just you guys talking about the things you care about. So check out both those guys on all things they do. Uh, K F A N. Uh, thank you.